present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove Dr. Mazo, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God I want you to notice the premise on which he begins the very substratum of everything else he says is I beg you and I beg you by the mercies of God or those things that God has done for you through justification propitiation reconciliation redemption sanctification and adoption he's saying based on what the Lord has done for you I want you to present your bodies it's interesting that this becomes then the basis by which he switches from doctrine to exhortation notice how God works with us he does not ask us to do anything until he does something first all right I want you to then just read a little further to verse 15 if you will just slide there he says now Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I read all of that, the, 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 the aspect of exhortation to provide the social side of being spiritual or the relationship side of being spiritual. Because here are practical exhortations that are extremely hard to do, yes? If verse 1 and verse 2 aren't accomplished, I want to talk a little bit about strengthening the foundation of relationships. Self. Strengthening the foundation of relationship, me. Self, me, me, me. Look at your neighbor and say, I got to get myself together. I thought you said that last week. <laughs> I got to get myself together. I want to open on this premise and I want to just throw this out to you. That self is the substratum or the base of all relationships. I, I propose that very humbly to you. That you cannot have a relationship without you. Can I just take my time tonight? If, if I don't hoop tonight, is it all right?
In fact, the part that I have the most control of in any relationship I have is me. And somehow I've sort of found out that not only do I have to have control of me to have relationship with you, also found out that I've got to find a way to have a relationship with myself. If I can get along with me, I think I can get along with you. The problem I've been having is that I've been blaming everybody else. for what's wrong with me. I think I gotta get myself together. I wanna give you a fundamental truth and, and, and let's go plunge into this fundamental truth. God said, it is not good that man should be alone. God said it. So he said, I will make an helpmate for him. Now you told me when I went to church that if I were spiritual, that that was all I need. But God said, It is not good for man to be alone. Now, we've got some problems with that. Because how can I be alone if God is there? God said, now, notice now, no one else evaluated man's mental state of being because no one else was there with him but God. So God became his psychiatrist and looked into his mind and God decided that it was not good for the man to be alone. Now you told me that all I need is God. And I'm trying to figure out now how can Man be alone if God is there. Seems like God's trying to tell us something. Uh, maybe God is saying, my relationship with a man is spiritual. But I've made him not only a spiritual creature, but I've made him a social creature also. And I'm not going to play the part of what is social. Mm -hmm. So now that blows a lot of testimonies. I mean, I came up here, well, Jesus is my husband. And the Lord has been a good wife to me. I don't think so because my relationship with God is not physical oh I don't know much I talk about this stuff my relationship with God is not social my relationship with God is spiritual so God then can say it is not good for man to be alone and be there because there are certain things he will not meet. But he will provide to meet them. Ah, I gotta get myself together. I've been thinking this thing a little strange. You see, now, 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 I, I'm, I'm gonna act like we have a little fire shy talk tonight. 
we just going to talk a little bit. You know, I, I can always pull the preaching anywhere along the line, but we need to talk a little bit here. We need to face some real things here. Prayer will keep you, but prayer won't satisfy you. Because prayer is spiritual. And it's by prayer I connect to God through faith in my spirit. And my spirit holds me with the agape of love. When my eros is pulling me out of control. Your fight tonight is to stay in line with God irregardless of your circumstance because there are times when your circumstance will pull you where your spirit doesn't want to go. Must I talk to some real people in here tonight? When he says it's not good for man to be alone then, we have to look at what good means here. Because I'm troubled with good. I mean good, uh, when the Hebrew gives us five general areas of meaning. One is practical, economic, or material good. Sometimes you're better off economically single. So uh, it couldn't be that. And then of course there is abstract goodness such as desirability, pleasantness and beauty. And then there's good from the standpoint of quality or expense. This is all Hebrew. And then there's moral goodness. And then of course there's technical philosophical goodness. And the question now is, which one is he talking about? It couldn't be morally bad to be by yourself. No, because Jesus was by himself and he was the epitome of what was morally correct. Paul was by himself and, and, and he was a bastion of spirituality. So it's not moral goodness. It's not philosophically bad to be by yourself because you can rationalize really well about being by yourself. Certainly, you can keep a lot of money if you're by yourself. So the goodness that he's talking about here is it's not desirable or it is not conducive to total happiness and well-being to be by yourself, to be single. Why? Because it's not good, desirable. Economically, that's out. Morally, that's out. But now, desirable, I I don't desire to be by myself. That's not our desire. Why? Because God made us spiritual and social. And even though he's there and I'm high in the Holy Ghost, there are times when I need to talk to somebody that I can lay my eyes on. Oh, I'm going to have some church tonight. I think we got to talk a little bit about alone here. Because alone from the etymological root here is to be separated, separated and isolated. So God now, my psychiatrist, has decided 
that it's not good for me to be alone after he made me by myself. Because he understands something about being separate and isolated. Satan likes to deal with folk who are isolated. Because a lot of wild things go on in your mind when you're by yourself. And most of the things that go on in your mind when you're by yourself is negative towards self. You begin to think nobody wants you. You begin to think you're less than others. Oh, you begin to think that something must be wrong with me. Maybe I don't have the physical pulchritude that others seem to have. And, and, and somehow there's a difference because when you're separate and isolated because you're abandoned, that leads to loneliness, destructive thoughts. Because you feel like you've been dropped. I don't know how far I need to go here tonight. Isolated. Satan plays with your mind to make you feel inferior because you're by yourself. And so when you begin to feel inferior, you feel like you have to do more to get somebody's attention and then Satan will provide somebody to use you because you're willing to give up more not to be alone because you feel like you've been dropped I wish Bishop would talk about dropped tonight. I don't think anybody talks about dropped like Bishop he talks about dropped, dropped but have you ever considered that maybe you're alone not because you've been abandoned but because you're so unique? Have you considered that maybe you're alone because you have narrow parameters? and refuse to allow anything in your parameters that does not suit the God you serve and how you feel about yourself. Oh, touch somebody, say, uh, I'm getting myself together. Touch somebody else, say, I'm feeling better about myself. And the, the better I feel about myself is the less I want to be bothered with some folk who just don't have anything to do but make a mess of my life. Is it all right to talk a little bit? Everybody's not alone because they've been dropped. Some folks are alone because they don't want to be bothered with some of the mess that other folk want to put you through. not desirable for man to be separate or isolated. So then God solves the problems of man's social dilemma. God solved it since he made him that way. The thing I like about God is whatever he allows, he takes responsibility for. That's, that's now you can note that about your God. If he allows Satan to mess with you, he takes responsibility for it. And after Satan gets through, he's going to do his work. And he'll give you double for your trouble after he lets the devil mess with your life. 
Uh, give somebody a high five and say, God's getting ready to fix things. It's, it's God's turn to work now. The devil's been working long enough, but God is getting ready. I just got to get myself. That's all I got to do. Get myself together. <laughs> Who God. So now God became the man's psychiatrist, evaluated the man's mind. Then God became the man's nurse and led him into the hospital under the panoply of the sky. Then God became a bone surgeon and cut the man open. Then God became a human constructor, took a bone out of the man and created a woman. Then God became the woman's father and brought her to the man then God stepped back and became the preacher and said who give it this woman to be the bride of this man he solved the problem touch somebody said God's getting ready to solve your problem but you gotta get yourself together responsible for what's outside of me but if I get myself together I can throw up holy hands and say Lord I'm ready I gotta get myself together everything was fine then but But here comes the problem now. Everything was fine. God had everything solved in the cool of the day. And, and you notice now, God was not perturbed by the man's attention to what he provided. God was not at all perturbed. And sometimes, I, I'm going to put it, I, I'm just going to throw it out there for you to think about it. Now, sometimes I think the church wants to get in to what God wants the church to stay out of. A lot of folk are by themselves today because the church decided to tell them what to do in their bedroom. I, I better leave that alone, you all just. <laughs> but the problem with the man was that God blessed him so good, he made a bad choice. God blessed him. The first thing he hollered was, Whoa, man! Oh, Jesus. This is, whew. Now, don't tell me God does not know how to bless. Do you know that a man will go crazy and halfway destroy you over a woman? And no man in here designed one. That's another thing I want to tell the church. God believes in you having a good time. Because God did not ask Adam how to design a woman. He was asleep. Uh, touch somebody and say, God knows how to put together what you want. Uh -huh. And then God knows how to make it turn you on too. So when you come to church, don't talk about I'm giving up nothing. No, you're getting ready to get something if you come to church because God knows how to bless. Oh, you ain't got to go out there and find something, you know, for yourself. God knows how to pick something out for you. All you got to do is get yourself together. Yeah. Uh, you know what the Lord just told me? He said, I already got your gift. It's already ready for you. You the one not ready for it. All you got to do is get yourself.
I just want to talk tonight. Is that all right? Your problem and my problem is what God has placed in our lives to bless us. If I had the time to talk about it. This sign is spirit. This sign is flesh. This sign is agape. This sign is error. I used to think in my early ministry that agape and eros were not connected after reading Plato. <laughs> but then I found out that God is the one who breathed into man. And if he breathed into man, then he breathed into him agape. When agape hit the, f well, hit the flesh, then it threw something else out. Because, I don't know my side talk like this. Folk don't get married over a God. Folk get married out of eros. But the mistake we make is to let our eros control our agape. Agape has to always control eros. Because agape is when you got yourself together with God, you can handle whatever he gives you. Oh, I feel God in this place. Pull on somebody, say, you coming out tonight. Amen. You coming out tonight. You ain't coming out. You ain't going in the way you, uh -uh, you coming out different tonight. Amen, amen. You might not shout tonight, but you coming out different. And when you walk out of here, you're going to tell the devil, I got my... He was split between... His relationship with God and the woman God gave split God bless you so good that you got a war between the giver and the gift oh that's that's the problem why you ain't been in church because you've been running after a gift trying to get yourself blessed and forgot who was the one that made her. You were asleep when God made her, which means if you hang with him and if she don't want him, he can find something else to bless you with. But you got to stay with the giver if the gift goes crazy. The gift can't give you God, but God can give you the gift. His choice put his relationship with God in jeopardy. Okay, can, can I ask you a few questions here? Do your choices please God? Oh, oh. Do your choices please God? That means God is making the evaluation. Let's ask another thing. Do you choose to please God? Or do you choose to please yourself? If your choices please 
please you? Will they please God? I think we got to have some guidelines here. Because we're in trouble here with this God who made us and then made our gifts. You, you see what I'm saying? You see, we have a tendency of leaving the giver out after we get the gift. Oh, I got to get myself together because I'm messing up. We have a tendency of loving the gift more than the giver. So now, when the man walks out on God and God corners him in the night, he says, the woman you gave me. And God is like, God is saying, what is it, my fault now that I tried to bless you? You, you blaming me for being good to you? I mean, you messing up over what I've done for you? Then that's why God has got some of us sitting by ourselves until we get ourselves together to understand when he gives us a gift, we don't run off with it and forget him. We got to praise him for the gift and I don't want no gift that does not please God because he is the giver. Well, I didn't get so many folk happy on that. I mean, do I choose to please God? If I please God, will I be pleased? If I choose God and it pleases God, then God and I have it going on. I walk with God long enough to know what pleases God. So I just choose. That's why he says, if I ask anything in his name, that means it would be like him asking. Oh, it's one thing to be able to speak to somebody. It's another thing to be able to speak for somebody. You got to be real close to somebody to speak for them. So now if God is walking in me and God is using my mind, my affections to make a choice, it's like his choice. His choice is my choice. My choice is his choice. If he's pleased with my choice, then I'll show you something else. He'll take care of it. Oh, now stay with me on this one now. Stay with me on this one. <laughs> the reason you are having so much problem taking care of what you chose It's simple, your choice didn't please God. Uh, how, how else can I put it? It's real simple. Because you fail to read that God is a jealous God. And anybody jealous when you choose somebody over them, they cut you off. Heard what he said? He said, by the sweat of your brow, you go eat bread now. I gave you everything and you chose somebody else over me. You better get yourself together because I'm Jehovah Jireh. And you got to have me to bless who's ever with you. So you better make sure who you put in your life, God is in the choice. Touch somebody and say, make God happy whenever you choose. And then you'll get a Mercedes in two weeks instead of 20 years. I, I don't... You have to understand this thing. I got to get myself together because Adam's choice jeopardized his relationship with God and when he chose he cut God's blessing off and now he's got to sweat his way to the bank argue about money all day long because he chose outside of God. Had he chosen like he should have chosen, he still would be having a good time 
enjoying whatever God gave him. Let me show something. Let me just show you something here. I, and I feel a preach coming on. I'm trying to behave though. Who I'm trying to behave. God had already taken care of all his needs before he made him. There was, God didn't make anything after Adam but the woman to share it with him. He had everything before God made him. God didn't bring him into something and had him to wait for something. Uh, let me tell you something. When God is in your choice, you will not be sitting around waiting for something, getting ugly and complaining all the time. Whenever God is in the choice, when you get in there, it'll all be there for you. God will have what... Oh, I feel like having church in here. Give somebody a high five and say, God's got it all when you step through the door. Before he brings you in, he'll start the mechanics to provide everything you'll ever have if he is a part of your choice. If he is, mm, glory, I feel your presence. Uh, can I take the next step now? Here now comes self and selfishness because man now is in adjustment because you have to leave and clean. Now notice now, when the man was, when the man came to himself, he was with God. But then he made a choice that excluded God. I want to deal with the leaving part. Whenever you leave God for your choice, You're doing it yourself now. You on self. Touch somebody and say now, you on self now. Yeah. Amen. A while ago you were with God, but you made a choice. You thought you were choosing something for yourself, but you choose to give something up in the choice you choose to take. And what you did was you choose not to have God when you choose what God didn't want you to have. So now, who is going to make it happen? You. Leaving God means doing it yourself. So now, my choices mean that self is an adjustment to whatever I choose. Oh, it's going to get heavy here in a little while. Because now, because I don't have anybody to consult with, I got to go on my own. <laughs> and now every time that that I choose moves, I got to adjust. Uh oh, here's how you put it. You got me going through changes. You were here yesterday, and I thought I knew how to please you, but where are you today? You awfully moody, ain't you? Man, your attitudes change minute by minute. You got me going through changes. You got to adjust yourself all the time to keep up with who you choose. And if you keep on distorting yourself to keep up with who you choose, pretty soon you won't know who you are because they change. I touch somebody and say, I gotta get myself together. Tell somebody else, I seriously have to get myself together.
you know, this is the first time I ever just talked. I feel good about talking. It's, a, it's, it's so relaxing. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm always stuck with my feelings. It really doesn't matter how someone else feels. You're always stuck with yours. And sometimes you try to adjust someone else's feeling so you can feel the right way about them. That's why I want to know how you feel about me so I can know how to feel about you. Stop trying to be so cute. You know I'm telling the truth. You're trying to act like, well, you know, he ain't talking to me. I got it all together here. You have spent more time trying to control how someone else feels so you can control how you feel. Because if their feelings are going crazy, so are yours trying to make these adjustments, trying to, trying to find where the line is, trying to get them to feel a certain way so you can, you know, wipe your sweat and sort of calm down because they got you going through too many changes. You're moving around too much and I can't put my hand on you, but if you had God with you, he could reach over and stop the madness I got to get myself together because I'm stuck with how I feel I'm stuck I'm stuck so now I'm always in trouble emotionally when you move and then when we're happy I'm trying to keep you Lord have mercy where this happiness is stay right there don't, don't, don't move stay there I feel good about you now Just don't move here. You see, you see, you see, you see. Now, the, the thing that goes wrong is I'm adjusting when I'm hurting because I don't like the pain. And I'm trying to get you now to quit putting this pain on me with all these changes you're putting me through. I'm getting sick of jumping around here, readjusting my feelings to how you're making me feel. And I can't control how you feel, but I'm stuck with how I feel. Now it gets really crazy when you can feel good about what's hurting me. So now I'm over here hurting and you're over there feeling good about what's hurting me so you don't want to move. I wouldn't have missed talking as well. I thought about this part. I said maybe I'd get the bishop to help me through here. When helping you is hurting me. Now, here's, here's the problem here. That's why he said, now you've got to learn to weep when they weep. 
rejoice when they rejoice. But in order to that, we got to sink our feelings. You can't have me over here crying and you're feeling good about my pain. And so I'm trying to move you off that spot because it hurts. But you like hurting me. So you won't move from where I need you to go because I'm stuck over here with my feelings. And I don't want to feel like I feel. I, I, huh. Do I have a few more minutes? I can feel rejected when you're successful. And you can feel rejected when I'm successful. So now we're in a situation where you're hurting and I'm glad. And I'm hurting and you're glad. And nobody will move to make an adjustment. So no matter what I am going through here, I got to get myself together. You know why I got to get myself together? Because you don't have the power to make me feel good. And I'm finding out now, oh God help me here. I'm finding out now that nobody is qualified to be with anybody else if they're not qualified to be with themselves. I don't want I don't want to mess with you tonight. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, "Can you be with yourself?" now you're qualified and that's why you still by yourself is because God is qualifying you to understand that you are wonderful you are special you are beautiful you are strong and you got to see it in yourself because somebody may see it one day to get a hold to you and the next day they don't see it at all and you jumping around feeling bad about yourself and why do you expect the person beside you to make you happy if you don't know how to make yourself Self happy. Shake three hands real quick and say, I got to get myself together. I really got to get myself together. I got to get myself together because I'm tired of going through changes. I got to pull myself up out of the mess that I'm in so I can praise God in spite of who likes me or who don't like me. I got to get my Mm. I feel the presence of God here. I gotta get myself together. I can't let my found something else about this. I'm sick of chasing my heart. Touch your neighbor and uh, tell your neighbor. Now tell the truth now. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, my head and my heart have not been together in a long time. <laughs> Come on. Uh-huh, they just sit up looking like this. Yes, your head and your heart have been on two different roads. in your heart head saying no 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 don't fall in love over there please 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 and heart said, and the head saying come back come back come back come back and the nerves behind the head saying well, how are we gonna feel today I don't know what kind of feeling
No, you don't have no business over there. But your heart said, go, 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 go. Your head said, no, 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 no. And your nerve says, oh, Lord, how are we going to feel next week? We getting ready to go on another one of these trips. We getting ready to be devastated again. How many months is it going to be this time before we can praise the Lord? Shake somebody's head and say, you better get yourself together because you can't keep going through this. I got to get my heart back. I'm trying to be good about this tonight. You in a mess, you know you in a mess. And you rationalize that you talk to God in prayer. Spirit of God came with strength. Because you got to be renewed here. Because the key thing here is that the mind changes a lifestyle. There has to be a psychology of religion. Because it's the psychosis, it's the mind that changes the lifestyle. You can't get out of nothing until your mind is in control. Because you leave your heart in control, you will love what your mind say you ain't got no business with. So what happens now is by faith in God, you move him into your spirit, he fortifies your spirit, then he works with your mind. But now your flesh is holding on to the world, and your flesh holding on to the world grabs your mind. So now the mind is where the war is between listening to the flesh holding on to the world or listening to the spirit holding on to God God says if you're not transformed you will keep on having last year this time's experience next year and your mind will say we have been here before Let me help decide through the spirit what you get a hold to. For God's sake, quit going by this flesh trying to decide what you get a hold to because we have been here before and I'm tired of chasing your heart. Stop the heart and let the mind catch up. You, you understand? So that you can say, no, let, let me take it even further here. Yeah. I'm trying to behave. I hope my time is running out. The hardest thing to do is to hear God calling you out of something that you shouldn't have been in in the first place and your flesh has gotten to like it. Somebody said, did he go there? Did he really go there? Sometimes, you're almost out. And something rises in you in the night and says, call now.
and something said you better not pick up that phone because you know what's going to happen if you hear that voice on the other side. You fasted to get out of that mess. You prayed to get out of that mess. You begged God to get you out of that mess. Don't pick up the phone. Don't pick up the phone. Give somebody a high five and tell them I'm getting myself together tonight. I got to, I got to come out of this junk tonight. I can't go back after this conference is over. This is not just another conference. This is my coming out party. I'm coming out. Tell somebody I'm coming out. I don't care how it hurts. I got to get out of this mess. It's no good for you, you know it. The spirit told your mind, it's no good. Your mama told you, your daddy told you, your pastor told you, your friends told you, the one who you with told you. on somebody say I help you get out I help you get out I help you get out because I can't leave you back in there I can't leave you back in there to kill yourself you got to come out of this mess tonight your joy is messed up your salvation is messed up your power is messed up your blessing is messed up everything you got is messed up you gotta get yourself together Yo, sit down. I'm getting ready to close. Tell your neighbor, we just having a family talk tonight. There's family members in here. I can get over. See, see. It had to come to where you are now. It just had to come to that. It had to get real crazy. It's crazy now, ain't it? It done got real crazy now. Because God has to use who you in with to get you out of it. God's got to use who you going after to get so crazy because nobody else is going to help you So because you ain't listening to nobody else so now he got to get so crazy she got to get so crazy until now you can I tell you the real truth you still ain't sick of them what happened now is you sick of yourself now for keep going back where God let you out. He said, I let you out one time and you back up in here again and I let you out again, you back up here again. I got to make it so crazy that the next time you get out, you ain't going back. ghost in here reaching down and pulling somebody out come on out tell your neighbor come on out follow your spirit and forget about your heart oh Jesus help me tonight somebody's got to come out of here every phone call puts another year on your life The last phone call was three years ago and you ain't out yet. God had you almost out. 
You fasted and prayed. Now you, you, you're, so, you're so tired of the junk. Now you ain't feel like fasting. Now you're just giving up now. God is saying, I'm going to put so much trouble on that situation until I break you loose. Now I've got a word to every, every man in here that's not saved. Don't mess with these half-saved women, boy. Because when God calls them back home, they're going to break your heart. Because they're coming back home, child. They're coming. Well, what about the BMW? Honey, I'm going back to God. What about the I'm going back to God? What about I'm going back to God? Because God can mess your spirit up so bad. You say, Lord, whatever you want. But somebody say, I got to get myself together. I got to get myself together. Oh, God, I feel you in here. Don't mess with these half-saved brothers, women. Because when God get ready to call them back, they going to come back because God know how to light a fire in your spirit and make you say, oh, Lord, I, I, I'm through, Jesus. I, I'm through, Lord. I, I want to come home, Lord. I'll give her up tonight. Just let me feel your Holy Ghost moving in my soul one more time, Lord. I feel like having church in here. Shake somebody's hand and tell them I got to get myself together. I'm tired of lying about what I'm going through. I'm ready to call a demon a demon. It was Jesus, whenever he healed something, he said, Beelzebub, you got to tell the truth. It's me, it's me, oh Lord. I'm the reason I'm hurting like this. I'm the reason I'm going through like this. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Jacob had to wrestle all night long. He had to fight with himself. It was what one writer called subjective prejudice. I got to get myself together. Shake somebody's hand. Say it's nobody's fault but my own to let myself be pulled through the mud like this. But I promise the Lord if he strengthened me one more time that I'm coming up out of this mess lifting up the name of the Lord. I'm coming up out of this mess calling on the name of Jesus. I feel the spirit of God here. Pull on your sister. Pull on your brother. And say God's got a purpose for your life. And the Lord is getting ready to love you through somebody. Can I just close tonight? What God wants to do is love you through somebody. Come on and give me some help. I know you're here to guard us, but I feel the Holy Spirit. Can I just preach like I feel it? Come on, Evangelist Bynum, help me tonight. I just need a little bit of help. You see, what God wants is not for you to make your choices, but for him to be in you. And what the evangelist wants is for God to love her through somebody. When you pick somebody, you're picking the God in them. Because he can't love you by himself. He needs God to reach through his heart, reach through his head, reach through his hands, and love you. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Lift up holy hands and tell the Lord, love me through somebody. I'm tired of picking for myself. I'm tired of going through changes. I'm tired of being up all night. I'm tired of being used and treated like a piece of trash. I'm tired of going to church and can't praise God over Saturday night. But I promise the Lord, if you strengthen me one more time, 
I'll tell the devil, get out of my house. Get out of my car. I gotta get myself together. I gotta get myself together. I can't be crying all night, waiting by the bus, looking for somebody who may not be coming off the bus. Paris is still Paris. London is still London. Get you a ticket and fly yourself somewhere. <laughs>